What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. As much as you may hate or love what the Red Sox have done this offseason, I think there's one thing everyone can agree on, and that is, and that is the Red bullpen looks much better this year than it did last year. So far this offseason, the Red Sox have added a legitimate closer, a couple of guys who are really great at limiting walks, as well as, more importantly, being consistent in that bullpen. That, combined with the surrounding young talent that the Red Sox have in the bullpen, they're poised to look much better in 2023 than they did in 2022. However, there is one thing still missing, and that is left-handed relief options. After the Red Sox traded Josh Taylor to the Kansas City, Royals. The only lefty left on the current roster for the Boston Red Sox is Joely Rodriguez. Now, there are a couple of options to add some lefty arms to that Red Sox bullpen. We did sign a couple of guys to minor league deals who are lefties, and there is still the free agent market because there are still some really viable options in the free agent market right now for left-handed relievers that could make a really big difference on this Red Sox team. And one of them, in my opinion, is a perfect fit. That guy is Matt more. So what we're going to do in today's video is go over why Matt Moore would be such a perfect fit for this Red Sox team and what makes him such a good fit for this bullpen. We're also going to talk about what it would take for the Red Sox to get him here and if it's possible to do that. But before we get into today's video, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. For those of you who may not know who Matt Moore is, or maybe you do know who he is, but you're not super familiar with his entire body of work, Matt Moore's actually been around Major League Baseball for a fairly decent amount of time. He's been at the Major League level with various teams for 11 years. Now, for most of those years, he was a starting pitcher. In fact, eight of those 11 years he has spent at the Major League level, he spent it as a starting pitcher. And as a starting pitcher in Major League Baseball, Matt Moore was fairly decent. In those eight years, Matt Moore had an ERA of 4.56 with a 4.35 FIP, so a little bit unlucky when it comes to his cumulative total ERA as a starting pitcher. He also had an 89 ERA plus, putting him slightly below average when it comes to production in terms of his ERA plus. Now, this, these statistics usually slot out to be a fourth or fifth person in your rotation, a guy who can eat innings but isn't going to give you the greatest statistics in the world. He did have some really good years, like I said, though. In 2013, he was an all star as well as coming in ninth in Cy Young voting. So at some point, he was a really productive starting pitcher. However, in 2018, he started to make a transition into more of a relief role at the major league level. He didn't appear in all of his games as a relief pitcher, though, until 2022. So 2022 was his first legitimate year as a strictly relief pitcher in Major League Baseball. And let me tell you, he had a great first year as strictly a relief pitcher because in 2022, he finished the year with a 1.95 ERA and a FIP sitting a little bit higher at 2.98. So there was a little bit of luck involved with Matt Moore's really low ERA total. Now that doesn't mean he's not an effective pitcher. In fact, even if his ERA does inflate towards that 2.98 number, that's still a really productive left-handed relief option. He also had an ERA plus sitting at 2 Three, meaning that he was 103% more productive than the average pitcher in baseball in 2022. Now, there are a couple of statistics that really stick out to me when taking a look at his baseball reference page. The first of those being the amount of games he actually appeared in. He appeared in 63 games for the Texas Rangers in 2022. And why I really like that number is because this means that it's not a small sample size. He was also fairly healthy throughout the entirety of 22 if he was making 63 appearances. And it's a guy who you you can consistently rely on to make appearances for you out of the bullpen. The second statistic that I really like is that ERA plus. That is insanely high. The fact that he is 103% more productive on the mound than the average pitcher in baseball means that he was really effective on the mound for the Texas Rangers. And obviously we could use some effectiveness when it comes to left-handed pitching on this Red Sox team. Now taking a look at his baseball savant page, it pretty much matches up with the career year, at least relief wise that Matt Moore had in 2022. There's a lot of red on this page. A couple of percentiles that really stick out to me are the expected batting average,
average, the expected slugging, barrel percentage, and hard hit rate. Basically, if you combine all those as his highest percentiles, what it really means is that Matt Moore is a pitcher that hitters have a really hard time making hard contact against. He's a guy who gets a lot of weak contact and a lot of pretty easy outs. And that may explain why his FIP is a little bit higher than his ERA as well. So those are both really good things to take a look at. And for the most part, his baseball savant page is extremely encouraging. There is one concern though on this page, and that is his walk percentage, which is towards the bottom of the league, meaning that Matt Moore does tend to walk a pretty decent amount of players, which is something that the Red Sox have tried to avoid this offseason. If you take a look at most of the pitchers that the Red Sox have picked up in the bullpen or in the starting rotation, they are guys who tend to throw a lot of strikes and tend to not walk a lot of people. The Red Sox had a big problem with walks in 2022. It felt like every inning, especially for relief appearances, a guy was getting walked in the first or second at bat, and that was always coming back to bite us. It appears as though the Red Sox are trying to get away from that in 2023. So if you're taking a look at uh, Matt Moore's baseball savant page, the fact that he does walk a pretty decent amount of people is concerning, but it is a very similar baseball savant page to Joely Rodriguez. In fact, it's eerily similar. They both have a lot of red when it comes to contact and the way that players are able to put the bat to the ball against them, but they both tend to walk a lot of people. And if you're talking about lefty options in the bullpen for the Boston Red Sox, having both of these guys as guys who may give up a lot of walks is something that is definitely a top concern when looking at Matt Moore, bringing him to this Red Sox team. However, he does have a lot of red everywhere else and his statistics in terms of his baseball reference page are off the charts. So it could be worth taking the chance on Matt Moore. He was clearly able to be effective regardless of the amount of walks that he gave up. And this could be a guy who was a starting pitcher at one point who could be that sort of long relief, middle relief role that the Red Sox are kind of missing when it comes to left-handed pitchers. Now, obviously, you usually go with right-handed pitchers when you're talking about a middle to long relief type appearance, mostly because in Major League Baseball, there aren't a ton of left-handed power options, especially in the AL East, but it's always nice to have options. And Matt Moore can be used as a long relief option if you're talking about a guy who, again, at one point was a starting pitcher in Major League Baseball. So there's that as well. In my opinion, the concern for walks is overshadowed by the encouragement when it comes to his actual statistics on baseball reference, as well as how much how much red is on his baseball savant page. Walks could also be something that the Red Sox can work on with Matt Moore. Maybe they realize something in his mechanics that's not allowing him to have full control over certain pitches, and maybe that's something the Red Sox work on. I'm not entirely sure, but in my opinion, the risk is worth the reward in terms of Matt Moore and his walk rate. As for getting him to this Red Sox team, it's not going to cost a ton. Sports Track has him sitting right around $3.5 million. Now, for the Red Sox, who really need a left handed pitcher and are starting to get towards spring training here, it may cost a little bit more when you're talking about actually bringing him to the team. My guess is that the Red Sox could sign him in that four to $4.5 million range. Ideally, in my opinion, you go you go with the $4.5 million and maybe do a club option after one year to see how well he performs in this Red Sox bullpen. But in terms of how this affects the Red Sox, it's not going to affect them too much, especially because it's very, very clear at this point. The Red Sox are attempting to stay under the luxury tax. Signing Matt Moore would not put you over and it would still leave you with some wiggle room in case you want to pick up some other smaller additions to this Red Sox team. So in terms of monetary value, can the Red Sox do it and still stick on their game plan of staying under the luxury tax? 100%. This isn't going to be a guy who breaks the bank for you. Now, like I said at the beginning, it's not entirely necessary for the Red Sox to look at free agency when it comes to left-handed options. They did sign two left-handed pitchers this last couple of weeks with Ryan Sheriff and recently with Skylar Arise. And those guys were signed to minor league contracts, but they could have an invitation to spring training. They could be a guy who makes the roster out of spring training and does really well like John Schreiber. But in my opinion, at the end of the day, I would love a consistent, reliable left-handed option in this Red Sox bullpen. And Matt Moore brings both of those, at least on his 2022 statistics. He's had peaks and valleys throughout his career, especially as a starting pitcher, but as a relief pitcher, overall, he's been really, really solid. In my opinion, the Red Sox could really, really use that consistency in a left-handed option in this Red Sox bullpen. As much as I would like to see a minor league contract like a John Schreiber do really well again for this Red Sox team because it's cost efficient, it's just cool to see guys who, you know, sort of had their backs up against the wall really perform and become a staple in 
in a bullpen. I think it would be smart for the Red Sox to go after a guy like Matt Moore. But that's just my opinion. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of Matt Moore? Do you think he's as good of a fit for this Red Sox team as I do? Do you like the money attached to him? Or would you go a different direction? Let me know all your thoughts on the Red Sox picking up Matt Moore down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seat.